Hello and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur. I'm Sunanda Jayasilan, today bringing you a special from Jaipur, where we have two influencers. First up is Amrapali, on the other side of a short break, Gem Palace in focus. Amrapali is the name when it comes to retailing to some of the biggest names, particularly in the entertainment space across the world. And I caught up with this founder, Rajiv Arora, to understand how they've managed to build a clientele that is so impressive in such a short span of time, to also understand from them uh, what it means to be retailing exclusively, uh, particularly in a time when most jewelers are online, and also what his way forward is. Take a listen. show in large part because uh, you were one of the winners of the Leaders of Tomorrow Awards in 2011. So it's exciting for us to come back eight, nine years later to understand what that journey has been like. Um, you're a first-time entrepreneur and as a first-time entrepreneur you are now the jeweler of choice to some of the biggest international celebrities uh, in Hollywood whether it's Beyonce uh, or others. What has the journey been like? How have you managed in the span of this, uh, in the span of your career uh, to become the jeweler of choice to some of the biggest names across the world? See my father was a lawyer and grandfather was a doctor. He was I think first batch MBBS in the country. So I come from a professional background. Uh, my uncle Lank both are doctors. Um, I get my honors in political science, get my uh, post-graduation in history, and afterwards I get my MBA in marketing. And while, while I was doing uh, my MBA in marketing, me and my partner Rajesh Ismera, we started Amrapali as a company. A very small, humble beginning uh, with some pocket money, which I saved from last five years. We started this um, organization. And because there was no money, it was initially we were dealing in handicrafts, uh, making wooden boxes, giving, supplying to exporters or Central Caucasus Emporium. And while we were doing this business, people, the exporters and other shops, they asked that Jaipur has so much craft. Can you supply us leg items or bangles or, or single wood sketches and different things, you know, paintings, paper paintings, cloth paintings. So I gig almost everything, you know. So uh, Jaipur is a city which has got a lot of positive energy and there's so, so good craftsmen, you know, all over. Uh, they have, some of them are master craftsmen who got President Awards. I went there, I saw what they do. I tried to take pieces from them and went to supply. And in this journey, after uh, maybe three, four years, AQ and AQ2, we started a very small shop in a touristic area. And there are these people who used to collect uh, old textile from Banjaras, you know, they came to me. Sure. And they had some old tribal silver also. And um, that excited me a lot. I thought that there's something very unique and new. And I asked them, where did you buy? They say, we go to Gujarat and go to Rajasthan, go to small villages, towns, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, we buy old things. And sometimes we get old silver jewelry also. And I thought that uh, fashion is changing, crank is changing. And maybe in near future, we won't see many people wearing these pieces. So um, we should do something with this, you know. And I think the first, my creative piece was I bought an old necklace with 10, 11 silver penguins in there. And I cut that necklace and converted it into five different earrings, you know, okay. just with my own hand, you know, with wire to skeg and make very nice earrings. And slowly, you know, this art developed. I started using some stones, you know, coral, turquoise, or garnets. So it's kind of silver jewelry, what Amrapali is today. And handicrafts was also running alongside. So it took maybe six, seven years when we also added in our portfolio more stones because Jaipur is, I think, the biggest center of cutting and polishing semi-precious stones in the world. Sure. Uh, so 
there was a little bit blinking of the stones and craftsmen. So we started making some necklaces with using same precious stones and some silver pieces. And they look so beautiful, loud singing. And there was a crank in the whole country about ethnic uh, clothes, you know. People like what we were doing there. And also started exporting silver jewelry. Uh, I want to talk about uh, some of the government regulations really for the gems and jewelry industry in India. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the fact that 3% GST has been announced for the jewelry industry. Uh, how did you perhaps brace for that change? Your advice to a small jeweler uh, about maybe some of the, Im the impact that they're really seeing out of this increased GST uh, charge and uh, what what do you think they should do about it? See, first of all, the policy makers. Yeah whether the in government, uh, political leadership, or the bureaucracy. Both should think jewelry in a different way in India. They always think it is a luxury. And that is why sometimes they bring excise on the egg. Mm. Sometimes they want to do a more GSK or more work, which is not fair. If you go from north to south, in south, if you go to a small fisherman, if they have a small saving, they will buy a gold earring or a gold pending. In our families, you know, when there is a wedding, people, they, they buy and they give um, jewelry because it is a istri dhan. Right. It, is, it is called when it goes to, to, to the yeah. girl. Or any time they have a reason to, to save money, they used to invest in silver or in gold. So it is not a luxury, it is a necessity. It is a part of our religion, our, uh, our rituals. So we need not to key, think it is, a, it is a, a luxury, it is a part of our lifestyle, so it should be taxed less. Sure. And if you want to um, grow your exports from India, if you want to make India as a jewelry hub, because we have fantastic chances to become the world's jewelry manufacturing base mm. works because we cut 90 percent of the diamonds of the world you know they are cutting in india in surat nafsari mumbai jaipur is the hub for same precious precious stones then we have skilled craftsmen so we should also have liberalized raw material if you import them they should be very less goody we are the most expensive in gold if you compare to Dubai or Bangkok. And that was one of the demands during the interim yeah, budget. Yeah. Would you want to see it come down further? Yeah, we, there should not be any case. It should be international market okay. price. If you want to compete with, with Thailand or Hong Kong or China or Dubai, you will have to give the equal field. We should get the gold in the same price like they are getting it. Okay. So how people will come to India to buy a gold jewelry or import because it's so expensive. Okay. Then they say that there are, there are agencies, government agencies, which will provide you gold or silver on international price. Not possible. I am sitting in Jaipur. I am also the uh, president of Federation of Rajasthan Exporters. Mm -hmm. We never get supply on time. Whenever you need to to manufacture something, you have to buy from the market and you pay duty. Sure. And then you claim the duty bag, except it's a okay. so long, long process. process. Yeah. I think the rules should be simplified. Mm. Once rules are simplified, you'll get better exports. If it is better exports, you have more foreign currency. Okay. And also you're providing more employment and more business in domestic market also gives more revenue to the government in the form of GSK, mm. in the form of income tax, the many people so you would work. say the 3% then is also unfair? Actually, on jewelry, if they are 3%, if they continue it also, on, on diamonds, they have done only 0.25%. Mm. So why on other stones it is 3% or 2.5%? Sure. That should be also the same. Sure. Why diamond is given preference? Diamond is the most expensive stone. Mm. The other cheaper stones should be also in the same category. So I think there is a need to have a good interaction between the industry and the policy makers. I'm sure that they, they do, but there's a big demand. Very important thing, when we are in GSK regime, mm -hmm. all the airports, when you cross the customs, it's a duty free area. In duty free area, if you have a shop and if you sell jewelry, you have to charge GSK. It is, why, how can it be possible? Around the world, if you buy something, 
in country and when you leave the country outside you can refund the vac yeah. you can claim the gsk so such things if the government will make it will give them more revenue better business for indian people and people will buy things here fair enough are there some demands perhaps you put in front of the government before the whole year budget in later this year we always yeah. do that mm. uh, government should listen try to understand they should also see the view point that india you cannot work in isolation yeah. we have to to take the policies which are neighboring countries all also having sure. or our competitors have your advice about maybe one or two things that you've kept in mind when you've brought the second generation on you know listening to their ideas listening to their thoughts but at the same time ensuring that the legacy of the business that you started with is also being carried forward how do small businesses then marry the two i think because uh, i was working i was designing they used to come to the shop they used to come to the workshop to the factory they have learned the tricks of the craig uh, from the father or from the uncle you know mm -hmm. that is very important but also you need to be very qualified these case the whether you if you're in medical profession a specialist is very very important you don't go to show your heart or ear to a general practitioner so what you are doing you should thorough you should know you should have all the technical knowledge what other people are doing uh, keep record participate in all the important conferences trade fairs seminars travel around the world go to the museums see what people are doing and how and much better we can do it okay uh, thank you for your time here on the show rajiv pleasure take a break on the other side we'll continue with our focus on jewelers out of jaipur gem palaces in focus do stay tuned back in just a short bit Welcome back here with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight our second the influencer is Jaipur based Gem Palace. Continuing with our theme as far as uh, gem and jewelry majors out of Jaipur are concerned uh, our next the influencer tonight is with Gem Palace. I spoke to them about some of the government policies that have been having an impact on the space including GST and demonetization as well as expectations from the upcoming budget. Uh, I caught up with the 32 year old Siddharth Kasliwal who's the son of the founder to understand also what it means to take forward the legacy of a business like Gem Palace as well as their approach when it comes to retailing online and offline tick less so that's uh, good having you here on the show with us thank you for having um, me It's always wonderful to talk to uh, you know the second third and fourth what generation are you of the family Well um we've been nine generations Okay ninth generation in 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 the trade of uh -huh. in the jewelry trade mm -hmm. but five in our company Okay so uh, exciting to talk to the fifth generation really Thank you precious uh, man of Gem Palace to understand how you're taking the business forward to understand how you are ensuring that while the legacy is being maintained you're also innovating and ensuring that your US been what you're known for then is something that is being taken forward as well uh, let's quickly talk about you know you as uh, you as an entrepreneur what excites you about this business where do you see the business going well I mean there there are a number of factors and number of things um, that excite me i first and foremost the family legacy mm -hmm. and you know the traditions and and the strong uh, uh, sense of belongingness that in india we have to to our families and businesses and the kind of pride we take in our legacy and our country and you know uh, everything that is about india so what really excites me in this is not the you know the what we call the bruha or the glamour mm -hmm. of of the jewelry business I mean that's a part that would excite everyone but what really excites me is to when i can take 
India and the Indian jewelry on a world platform to various museums around the world. And when I hear people appreciating our jewelry and craftsmanship and they're just like flabbergasted, spellbound that mm. this cannot be made in this century. And then there's a smile on my face and I'm like, yes, in India we still can do this, which the rest of the world cannot. Mm. So that is one thing that, that really um, gets me excited. Um, it, it also is because in jewelry business, you know, the stones come from all over the world. Uh, so it, it involves a lot of traveling. Yeah. So the traveling part, who doesn't want to travel? But uh, if you can travel for work, then it's amazing. How do you ensure that um, you're talking about quality? How are you ensuring that everyone who's buying from you or you're reaching out to potential customers and helping them understand why perhaps your products are priced at a certain price? Are you using social media? What are you doing? So it's a very interpersonal relationship that we have with clients. We don't sell online. We want the clients to come and experience the luxury and touching and feeling the luxury. Okay. So when each and every piece is unique and special, rather than mass producing uh, 200 rings of the same kind and you mm -hmm. send it to all our different stores across Delhi and Bombay, there is no fun behind it. There is no creative process behind it. So that's what our clients like about us. They come to Gem Palace and they know that apart from having a unique experience, mm -hmm. they'll be walking out with a unique piece of jewelry which no other woman walking down the street would have. Because many a times mm -hmm. when clients come and say, oh please copy us the piece from Cartier, copy this piece, we say sorry we don't do that. That's our number one policy. We don't make other people, our other jewelers jewelry. So in today's time, mm -hmm. coming back to your question, it is challenging to keep when there's so much around and so much distraction mm -hmm. with Instagram and Facebook and all these things that you see. But I could say we, we have stuck to our, uh, we have been like very abided by our principles, by ethics, uh, by our customer loyalty, that we need to make the best of the best and give it sure. to them. And uh, also Jim Palace never advertises, so for us, it, it has always been through word of mouth yeah. okay. and friends sending friends and generations. That's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So like I'm a generation uh, jeweler, multi-generational jeweler, the same is with our craftsmen. Mm -hmm. So to ensure that they still continue working with us, it's almost like a large extended family. Our, our craftsmen and even the clients, some of the clients come here to buy their daughter's jewelry and they're not here as clients and we don't have that formal. They they come, they they eat at our home, they, they spend a few days at our farm, you know, it's that kind of relationship we have clients and that only comes with trust. My question to you is advice in terms of what you would want our viewers to know about branding and marketing their business. How do you ensure that you're branding right? How do you ensure that that brand that you've built for your business is being communicated right? See, in today's world, I won't say that we don't use social media, we do, but we definitely don't use social media to sell. Mm -hmm. In our case, because we are the higher price points, mm -hmm. so we just keep our followers or our customers intrigued by, okay, that's coming out. But um, about the branding, we have a very different approach. Like I'd mentioned, mm. it's through word of mouth. Uh, it's doing international museum tours. It's mostly through uh, media and uh, magazines that press, that they write about us and people read. And also Gem Palace has a unique history. So we are probably on the, on the luckier side of we have an advantage that Anybody who's coming to India from Europe or America, they already have read about Gem Palace. Uh, my last couple of questions, and I want to talk about the industry at this point. Uh, India, of course, uh, is the largest country when it comes to the consumption of gold. That's true. Um, a couple of things that, for instance, the industry had demanded, and this was during uh, the just announced interim budget, was a cut as far as gold import duty is concerned. Uh, my question to you more is a bigger one. Um, as one of the leading players really in the jewellery market. What are maybe the couple of things that you'd like to see? Anything that you'd like to see from the, uh, the full year budget that's going to come in June or July of this year? What are your expectations? It is not only important financially here, but it's also 
very very important religious beliefs and culture and uh, also it is a sense of security for for people in villages and city and everywhere like the women of the households they 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 like to convert whatever they have uh they they assets the cash or check they want to keep gold in that because that's one uh, thing that you can liquidate immediately and i think so if the government can give it a give a little cut and not make it so expensive because the gold in india is way more expensive obviously more than like dubai but even the new york and and london mm -hmm. that the gold comes here with so many duties and all that by the time you you get gold in india is already so high sure another thing that with this gst thing even though we are only in 3% yeah. bracket you must be happy with the with the we are happy at the absolute low uh, range that's that's good but the process of how some pieces of jewelry takes few years and the gst has to be registered in 6 months and 3 months so it always gets challenging so the the working of gst is still not very compatible with jewelry business and one point that i would like to bring in your notice because we have we have a huge uh, client base who are foreigners mm -hmm. they are west like they're travelers and they often ask us and i think so government should really look into this factor that they have to build gst refund center like vat refund centers mm -hmm. at the international airports and people should get that because you get that in london you get that in europe anywhere you go and as a foreign citizen if you're sure. buying jewelry or buying luxury products at the airport they have a refund and just today we had this family and they they asked me they're like you're charging us 3% tax that's great because we but we don't live in this country so we should be getting the re, the refund back and they're right let's quickly address also demonetization i know it had a big impact on the jewelry market do you think uh, demand has bounced back since then most of our sales are through credit card okay. so we didn't feel as okay. much as like how gold uh, a person who deals mostly in gold jewelry would feel mm. uh, but it definitely had an impact and i genuinely believe the demonetization was still okay but the gst yes, that just came out sure. that that really shut down the jewelry market sure. because it was too close to each other sure. i really hope government could have given some time for people to just but this back to back action mm -hmm. severely hampered the growth of the business okay so then my last question to you is that what next for you at the business the next thing for me would be that to start a school of artisans mm -hmm. where this craftsmanship and this workmanship sustains and the current craftsmen take an equal pride in like teaching the the younger craftsmen who come and it continues for many generation and it doesn't die out and it's not lost in the pages of history of india okay and we show all the way best thank you thanks for your time thank you for sure. having me there. thanks thank you That's our show tonight. Do let us know if you have any feedback for us. The leaders of Tomorrow Times Group dot com is our email ID on Twitter Sunanda underscore J and L O T underscore E T now on Facebook Leaders of Tomorrow on E T now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.